tree grows hidden. The tree of life. They say whoever drinks of its sap will live forever. I love movies that are out of the box yeah. and unconventional. And a lot of people who saw the screening uh, were angry, you know. And I just, I, I loved it. And I said, if I was a producer of this film, I love when they has an emotional response like this. Because yeah. people were going and expecting a Norman Rockwell, and they got a Salvador Dali. Yes. You know, where, <laughs> yeah, that's how I describe it. That's true. And so I was thinking for you, as an actor, you really had to put your trust in Darren's wisdom and his yeah. vision, didn't you? Well, I'd seen his movies, so I knew I could trust him. I had um, also, reading the script, I believed in a lot of the things, of the themes of the movie. I didn't fully understand it, but emotionally it just really moved me. I found it uh, very touching. And, and Darren and I worked on that film for a year before we started filming. So we got to know each other. By the time we started filming, uh, I was beyond trusting the guy. He was like, you know, we were partners. What do you think you're doing? You don't abandon results like that. You have to repeat the procedure, get a confirmation. Confirmation that the tumor is unaffected? She'll be dead by then. Tommy. She had a seizure. I'm so sorry. How's she doing? She's stable. Who's with her? She's alone? She needs to rest. Tommy, no one invents new drugs overnight. No one. You're not being rational. You can't fix everything. Don't tell me what I can and can't do. Your wife needs you. And I just wondered if, if there's any kind of insight that you would know about where he comes with his ideas. It's absolutely a complete, total mystery to me. I have no idea. The guy that I know is a, as you met, is like a very regular nice guy. His favorite TV show is The Price is Right. <laughs> you know, he's like a really regular guy. And so this is his, this is his imagination. He puts it all into his work. He's very passionate. He had a dream to tell this very romantic story and make it within the Hollywood system. And his dreams have come true. And he's told, made this completely unique piece of cinema. Uh, but I don't know where it comes from. I don't know. Don't hurry. We're almost there. Through that last star cloud is a dying star.
Now, it's funny because I have a copy of the script right here. Oh. And uh, I read the first five pages. Where'd you get that? Oh, secret, secret. And I read the first five pages and the last five pages today. Yeah. And just to get, you know, the hold of what was going on. And not many people realize, but in a script, especially a film like this, you think that maybe he's like on the set one day going, all right, Hugh, let's just do this instead. No, it is word for word in here. Oh, yeah. This is what's shot. There is no improvisation. No. And I was wondering, when you read this for the first time, you were thinking, how in the world is he going to pull this off, or what does it all mean? I did think that. I thought, how are we all going to pull it off? I thought my part was incredibly challenging. And, you know, actors love that. We want to feel, on one hand, a little bit very confident, I suppose, maybe even a little arrogant. I'm the one who should play this role. <laughs> but also to feel, I have no idea I'm going to pull this off. Because then you know you're kind of in the realm where you might bring out your best. If you're just confident and you know you could do it in your sleep, then usually the results are a little boring, to be honest. So uh, it's good to be on edge. And, and I was on edge and, and I was hungry to do a role like this. I'd had great opportunities in film. But this is the first film I really felt would demand everything of me. Where do these ideas come from? I know it's a generic question, but yeah, yeah, what yeah. is inside your mind, man? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's a lot of time with a lot of different filmmakers working together. I mean, I've always described what I do very much as being a tapestry maker. I'm sort of out there in the world, and I pull different threads from different places, and I weave them together, braid them together, and eventually I get this carpet, which in this case became the fountain. Um, but it's hard to say where it comes from. It's just more people just working together, trying to do stuff that's very, very different, to take people in a very, very different place, a different experience. 